G'day guys, welcome to ABCPE, the site where we try and make BCPE as easy as ABC. Today we're gonna to look at the chronic cardiovascular responses to aerobic training. Remember that uh, these aerobic training chronic responses, whether they be muscular, respiratory, or cardiovascular, basically what we're trying to do is get more O2 to the muscles. So today we're gonna to be talking about um, the transport of O2 to the muscles, which is done by the cardiovascular system. Important to note that these, our muscles, or the aerobic athlete's muscles, crave oxygen, just like Homer is looking at that hamburger. In this field, most of your answers are gonna end with this statement. More oxygen in the muscle is gonna mean we can resynthesize ATP at a faster aerobic rate, which means like Dusty there, he's fending off an opponent, we can fend off the anaerobic glycolysis system and it's nasty hydrogen ions, which means we can run faster for longer before we get fatigued. As you can see, there's quite a lot of cardiovascular adaptations. Uh, those ones in blue are cardio adaptations, cardio is related to the heart. The ones in black are vascular adaptations, that means blood or blood vessels. Uh, the underlying ones are the ones we're gonna go through in detail. We will go through AVO2 difference in a later date with our muscular adaptations. VCAR have said that AVO2 difference can be either muscular or vascular. First thing we're going to talk about is this increase in stroke volume. Basically, at the heart to muscle. So like your biceps, when you go to the gym, they get bigger. If you train your heart, it will also get bigger. In particular, it's the left ventricle that we're most concerned about. So the left ventricle will get bigger, meaning it can pump out more blood per beat. So we have an increase in stroke volume. In that blood, we have the oxygen, and the oxygen's trying to get to the muscles. So due to this greater stroke volume, it means that our resting heart rate can decrease. Our heart does not have to beat as often to meet our energy requirements. Remembering that at rest or at submax activities, our O2 requirements remain the same. Just how we get there slightly changes. Athlete will come up pretty often in SACs or exams and it'll ask you to say who is the trained athlete, either athlete A and athlete B. The best place to have a look at is here. Okay, athlete A has a lower resting heart rate. That means they must be the trained athlete because their stroke volume has increased, allowing the heart to beat less often. So cardiac output is the most important one of these probably, and this is the amount of blood pumped out of the left ventricle per minute. It's the combination of stroke volume times heart rate. Our max heart rate is 220 minus your age regardless, so that'll say the same. So a bigger stroke volume at the same max heart rate is gonna to lead to a greater cardiac output. In this case, trained versus untrained, six liters per minute more, which means that's gonna have a whole lot more oxygen being delivered to the working muscles, which the muscles can then use for aerobic ATP resynthesis. So a massive advantage for a trained runner. Okay, here's a little demonstration, hopefully to make this concept a little bit easier. Here we have an untrained heart, and here we have a trained heart. After six weeks plus of aerobic training, the heart will increase in size and therefore a bigger stroke volume. A little demonstration, this is per beat from a smaller heart. We'll have about 70 mils of blood. From a bigger heart, we're gonna have up to about 120 mils per blood. So hopefully you can see per beat, this is gonna give us a whole lot more blood, which means a whole lot more oxygen that we can deliver to the muscles. So at rest and at submax levels, our energy requirements actually remain the same, which means our cardiac output will be the same whether trained or untrained at rest. However, how we get there is gonna be a little bit different. Due to the smaller stroke volume of the untrained heart, that heart will have to beat more often to meet those energy requirements. Whereas if you are trained to get to the same cardiac output, you will have to beat less times in order to meet those energy requirements. All right, now we're gonna go for max exercise. I'm making a really big mess here, but that's okay. Hopefully we're getting the point that at max exercise, our heart is going to beat as fast as it can. So let's try and get our heart beating as fast as we can and see what happens with the different stroke volumes. I'll just make sure these are on properly before I get too much of a mess. My wife kills me, ready.
So when we are beating as fast as we can, hopefully you'll be able to work out that with the biggest stroke volume, we're gonna get a whole lot more blood being pumped out of the heart per minute. So a greater cardiac output. And this greater cardiac output means more blood out of the heart. And in that blood is the oxygen. So that means more oxygen is gonna be delivered to those working muscles. Hopefully that video made it a little bit easier for you to get your head around that. Here's a question where you'll be able to hopefully use that knowledge and apply it into a VCAR question. This one is from 2014. Both A and B worth doing. I'll give you a second to do that. So really a difficult concept. If you're getting three out of three for this one, you're basically you're up around that 40 study score mark. Next things we're going to talk about is the vascular adaptations. One of them is the increased capillarizations. Capillaries are the areas for diffusion. So if we have more capillaries, that means we're going to get more oxygen diffusing into the muscles, which means more O2 for aerobic ATP resynthesis. You can see here that slow twitch muscle fibers, due to the fact that they're the ones that use the oxygen, are going to have greater improvement through training rather than the fast twitch fibers. Finally, we're talking about increased blood volume. So total blood volume will increase from about five and a half liters to six and a half liters. So how cool is the body that will actually be making more blood? Hemoglobin, which is the oxygen carrying component of the blood will also increase. And then total blood plasma will increase. All of these things, so total blood volume means there's more room for oxygen to be carried. Hemoglobin means there's more carriers of that oxygen and blood plasma will mean that the blood will move quicker through the body because it's less viscous, which means thinner, which means you'll be able to get through the blood vessels quicker. So all of these adaptations are gonna to lead to increased O2 delivery and therefore increase O2 at the muscles. Here's a VCAR question to try and demonstrate that concept. So hopefully you guys were able to identify a subject B as the elite male cross country skier, um, knowing that cross country skiers are some of the greatest aerobic athletes on the planet. Um, again, not super well answered, only 16% of the state got this one right, but an elite aerobic athlete are gonna have greater red blood cell counts, greater hemoglobin, greater hematocrit, um, because they are able to carry more oxygen around to the muscles. So if we can carry more oxygen to the muscles, that means we can produce ATP aerobically at a faster rate. Again, this keeps coming up, so something to put in your vocabulary. Okay guys, that's the end of the chronic cardiovascular responses to aerobic training. I hope that's made that area as easy as ABC. For more information, go to our website. Remember, we're gonna be holding revision seminars from the 29th to the 2nd of October on a webinar. Um, you can join up to those seminars at abcpe.com.au. Thanks again for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.